Hi everyone, this is Matt Two Show with Intro Stats, and today we're looking at a few problems from my textbook. Uh, this is um, section 2D, as in dog, uh, numbers 21 through 32. So this is uh, basically kind of getting at the meaning behind confidence. We've been talking about confidence intervals, but what do they mean by that 95% confidence or 90% confidence? There's a great tool in StatKey that you can use to sort of understand this idea of confidence. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through it real quick. So um, I have in, my in the problems, it really walks you through what to click on. So you go here, go to my website, and they want you to click on coffee data, and then copy the Columbia and mild price data. So this is numbers 21 through 26. So this is some quantitative data and we're going to be looking at the mean averages of, um, of samples. So um, we have basically we're creating a sampling distribution just like we did in previous sections but now instead of just um, calculating tons and tons of sample means we're going to actually calculate tons and tons of confidence intervals and see what happens. Alright so if we go to my website Here's my website. Uh, again, we click on statistics. The directions say click on statistics and then click on data sets. So there's data sets. And we're looking for Coffee Data Excel, which is right there, Coffee Data Excel. So you just go to data sets and then you click on whichever data set. And it's usually good to use the Excel data sets. The Staccato stuff, uh, files are you know, just for Staccato, but if you're doing StatKey, you're gonna be wanting to use the Excel files. So if I click on that, just like that and it says what do you want to open it with and I'll say oh I'm gonna open it with Excel so just push OK and this will pop up now again you should always click enable editing whenever you open a file open a, uh, a data set so click enable editing here and they said they want us to use the Columbian mile data which looks like the first column so again, I'll, I'll put my cursor above the column where it turns into a downward arrow. You can also click and drag down if you want. But if it's a really big data set, you might be better off just doing the putting your cursor above the data set where it turns into a downward arrow and then left click and it highlights the whole data set. Now I'm just going to right click and copy or push control C. I like control C, so that copies it. Now the directions say to open StatKey, so let's do that. StatKey is located at lock5stat.com, and then we click on the StatKey button. So when you first go to uh, lock5stat.com, it takes you to this, and then you click on it here where it says StatKey. Okay, now once you do that, um, now you can, uh, you're going to go to, it says t uh, click, uh, com uh, sampling distribution for the mean. So we're going to go right here, sampling distribution for the mean. Again, these are just directions right off the problem. It tells you what to click on. So sampling distribution for the mean, I'm going to click on that. It says it wants me to put in this data. Now we're assuming this is sort of like population data. This is like a census. So because we are making a sampling distribution from this population. So I'm going to click edit data. I want to delete out any data that's in there. So control A is a good way to highlight everything and then delete. Okay, now I'm going to push control V and paste it in there. Now again, one of the things with data sets is, first of all, it does not have an identifier. There's not a, num a word next to every number. That's called an identifier. So always uncheck this box that says identifier. It does have a title. So I'm going to leave the, where it says header row, that means title. Now if your data set, if you didn't use the title, if you got rid of that title, then you would click uncheck the box that says header row. And I'm just going to push OK. And there is my population data. This is all of the Colombian mild coffee that this company got. So and it's um, basically all the population data. Um, Let's kind of see what the, um, they did say in the problem to uh, put the sample size as 30. So I'm going to do that. So right here it says sample size n equals, I'm going to click and put in 30. It's almost identical to what we've done previously when we're making a sampling distribution from a population. I want to take thousands of random samples, all of size 30 from this population. That's what the computer is going to do for me. Okay. So, um, the fir the, let's see what the questions are. Let's go ahead and make the sampling distribution. Again, it tells you what to click on. You just have to kind of follow the directions. 
it says go ahead and generate a thousand samples a few times so let's do that notice what we have is a sampling distribution basically we have three thousand random samples here uh, and then three thousand sample means all on the same graph right and again I can see sampling variability at work the population mean is 136.427 here's the population mean right here at the top right where it says population so there's the population mean right here there it is right there so that's the population mean but notice my sample means are all over the place right very few of my sample means are around 136 I, mean, I got I got sample means of 115 all the way to 160 165 so a lot of sampling variability there right so just like what we learned before so it says notice the now um, now it wants me to make the confidence intervals. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to make confidence intervals from the samples. So in every one of these samples it's going to make a confidence interval. You do that by clicking this button that says confidence interval button. So if I click on that, notice it basically uh, created tons and tons of confidence intervals. Now it might be better for me to to reset this and go a little bit slower so for example if I generate uh, one sample this one sample right here has a sample mean of 142 and this bar this green bar right here represents um, the confidence interval that was made the upper and lower limits of the confidence interval now the population mean is denoted by this dark line right here so if the if the confidence if the population is in between the two numbers the upper and lower limit of the confidence interval it's denoted as a green confidence interval this confidence interval succeeded the population actually is in between the two numbers now if I do this again, right, I generate another sample. Now this other sample had a, a sample mean of 143. And again, um, I'm sorry, uh, and then we, we go ahead and put those in here and there's another confidence interval and so on. So you can kind of generate samples. So you kind of keep generating samples. Now right now I'm set at the 95% confidence level, but you can actually change it to 90 or 99 or even 80. Now the key, the key is here, look at these confidence intervals. They all are green. They're all containing the population value. But if I keep going with this, oh, look at that. I got one now. I got one that's red. See this red goes with this dot right here on the far right. It's almost like an outlier in the sampling distribution. The sample mean is so far off from the population mean that even if I put a confidence interval around it, the population is value is not in between the two numbers. Right? So this is what we mean by confidence, that not all confidence intervals succeed. The green ones they succeed, the red ones they do not. So if I, I started when I started out I was at a hundred percent. But now, you know, after 22 of these, I, I'm at I'm at 95%. And the more of these samples you take, the closer this number sort of it it'll go up and down and up and down and up and down because of sampling variability. But it does sort of get closer to 95%. The more you do this, okay. So let's see if we can answer the questions now from this. I'll just use what I got here. So I, the first question says. Um, Notice that the confidence intervals were different each time. Discuss the implications of sampling variability on the accuracy of a confidence interval. Okay, so what we see is sampling variability not only tells us that random samples will be different, it also tells us that these sample means over here on the left are, are going to be different, and the confidence intervals we create from those sample means will be different. Okay, so we got different samples different sample statistics and different confidence intervals. Every time you take a random sample, you're going to get a different confidence interval. That's what sampling variability tells us. And this graph over here with the green and red shows that. Okay. Um, if we kind of move on here, the population mean, um, we saw that already. How many total random samples did you take? You can kind of look, I took 22 there. How many of them were uh, green? Um, that would be 21, and that was about 95%. Uh, how many did not contain the population mean? I had one out of 22, 
which was pretty close to 5% here. As the number of random samples increased, did the percentage get closer or farther away to 95%? Now this is kind of a tricky question with number 25 because, you know, there's so much sampling variability. But theoretically, usually if I take just a few samples, I'll be pretty off from 95%, but the more samples I take, the more the number will start to get closer to 95 in general. That's theoretically. So what does this picture tell me about the definition of 95% confidence? 95% of confidence intervals created contain the population value and 5% do not contain the population value. They want us to explain that definition. Well, if you look at the picture here, you can kind of see it. About 95% of the confidence intervals we make will be green, right? They'll contain the population value. And about 5% of them will be red. They will not contain the population value. So this implies that not all confidence intervals actually succeed. About, I will expect about 5% of confidence intervals we make to not contain the population value if we're dealing with a 95% confidence level, okay? Now, the, let's take a look at the next one. The next one's the same thing, but it's for proportions. And we're looking at uh, setting the population percentage at 50% and then making a sampling distribution uh, sample size of 30. And we want our confidence level at set at 90%. Okay, so let's look at that. I'm going to go back to stack key. This time I'm going to sampling distribution for proportion. So sampling distribution for proportion. So I'm going to click on that. And again, these are all directions that are given to you in the, in the actual problem. You just got to click on them. Uh, under Edit Proportion, I'm going to click on the population percentage of 0 0.5. Since we're dealing with flipping a coin, that the population proportion should be 0.5 or 50%. Now, they want me to set the sample size at 30 again. So I'm going to do that. Set the sample size at 30. And again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, go ahead and generate some confidence intervals. So um, I'm, if I click confidence interval here, there we go, confidence interval, and that, that dark line in the middle is set at 0.5. That's the population proportion. But the question is, how many confidence intervals will that population proportion be in the confidence interval? Will it be in between the upper and lower limit? Well, if we take a look,